Want to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much for all of the continued support. And I am done. Okay, so I just got done reading Of War and Ruin by Ryan Cahill. This is the third book in the Bound and the Broken series. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was just right now. So, <laughs> this is book is so good. This is, uh, this is, I think, the book that I've been waiting for since I finished um, the Wheel of Time series. And it, it feels like it's taken what was laid down with the Wheel of Time, which is well considered by a lot of people is one of, if not the best fantasy series of all time. Um, and it feels like it elevated it in literally every single way. And I say that is a huge Wheel of Time fan. And it's, it's different than Wheel of Time. Um, but it's that epic fantasy. It's that high fantasy characters going on, a, on different quests and, you know, meeting up with their friends and going off to do their own things and trying to take down this great evil in the world um, that started with Lord of the Rings. And it's the best of the bunch. I'm, I'm just, I'm in awe at, at how good this thing is. And I'm so thankful for all the people that really told me to press on in this series because, you know, this is the third main book. This is the fifth total book because the author does the uh, book novella book novella thing which is which i'll talk about uh in a little bit um but it's it, every one of them keeps getting elevated and in the first book i didn't love it and I, I i think a lot of the people that i talk to about the series end up uh dipping out of the first one because it's just not working for them uh for all of the reasons that i had a problem with it and then it just felt so tropey and brought nothing new to the genre and has been done to death and then it, it took the, the second book, and especially this third one, to such a different height um, that I just have to plead people to push on with the first one, which is not a bad book, um, but it just it's nothing even close to what the next two books in this series um, have in store for the reader. It's, it's really almost a perfect book, and there are criticisms I have with it. They're so nitpicky on... Not necessarily that makes it not good, but not perfect in the eyes of me. I mean, there's a couple facets missing. And they're facets that I feel like have been executed to kind of perfection with something like A Song of Ice and Fire, where the book feels at this point just a little too predictable. And maybe th those big moments of surprise are going to happen later on. You know, but we're not getting any of those major hallmark moments that you get um, where you're just shocked at, at what just occurred. And there's so many that I could pick from from uh, from the Song of Ice and Fire series that, that did it perfectly. And I think that's kind of one of the strengths of that series where it just it totally hit you out of left field. It's not afraid to pull a punch on changing the direction of a character. Take, taking out major characters, taking out POV characters. Um, and I don't need it to be like that, but it would it would help it. And, and the other thing that I feel like is missing, which also kind of was there with, with the A Song of Ice and Fire series and, and other series, but I feel like that's one that's well known, is that deep amount of political intrigue that I just feel like is slightly missing here. But but that's it. I mean, it's got these this amazing world, this this perfectly built world where it just feels like the right amount of detail going into it. It's not doing the thing where it throws out too many details. And Lord of the Rings, I'm looking at you, and I know people love that series. Um, I like the series. I don't love it as much as most people, but but I certainly do like it. But it, it, Lord of the Rings did the thing where it did world building in a way where it said, let's just throw an entire, let's make a world and, and down to the smallest detail on the father's 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 whole family tree and information that you're never going to need as a reader. It doesn't do that. Um, but it does throw an enormous amount of detail of this world to you, but in a way where it feels like virtually everything that's explained and, and built out in this world feels relevant in some way to the story. And, and in some ways, maybe not 
you know, this is going to be majorly impactful to the series, but it's going to be very useful to know this information to get an appreciation for these other things that are going on here. So in terms of world building, this story is among the titans of this genre. And that's an amazing feat. And world building is a major thing that I read for. And what also feels like continually improves here, because that, that world building thing has majorly improved. I mean, it felt like in the first book you had the foundations being built. I mean, you look at this map and it's gorgeous. I mean, a huge map. And you're like, you know, this is the kind of map that I want to see where the characters are going to be going all over this thing. Probably not even getting close to touching other locations, but it feels real. It feels huge. It feels like there's diverse aspects here. It feels like you could just eat it in and feel the culture just coming out of it. And no, you know, different races live here and they've started here and they've migrated here. And, you know, these clans don't get along and here's why and all these different kind of things. Um, but as I'm reading along, the characters are doing so much crisscrossing around this map and doing this adventuring that they are kind of going to all these different places. And, it, and it's amazing because you just get that sense of culture here and that there's a world that's breathing and, and it's awesome. You know, another thing that I feel like the first book kind of dropped the ball a little bit on and the others have majorly picked up is this aspect of the character building themselves um, and developing these characters. Because in the first book, we had this so minute amount of different people here that we were dealing with. It was really mostly, in, in large part, dealing with uh, one character and his friends and the people that he encounters and the journey that goes along. But it's building out now. And now that we've set the stage and these major events are going on, we've got many, 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 many different point of views uh, dealing with very important stories. And it does that Wheel of Time thing that I absolutely adore, where these characters are splitting off and they kind of come back together and different groups are breaking out and they're just all kind of intermingling and you almost have to take notes. Now, I know that's a little daunting thing. You certainly don't have to. I certainly did. Um, on who's with who, what happened at the end of their point of view, so you can just pick right up as they come along. But it just, it feels epic in scope. And I will go ahead and say that in terms of the big epic fantasy stories that have these characters going on a quest, this might be the best book that I've ever read. And I'm comparing that to things like Lord of the Rings. I'm comparing it to things like Wheel of Time. I'm comparing it to things like like Stormlight Archive, which I thoroughly love. It just has everything that you would want here. And, and I'm also going to go ahead and compare it to things like The Faithful and the Fallen, which, is, which does a very similar kind of thing. Um, and it just has that amazing, perfect blend of old school fantasy, of dealing with these tried and true themes of friendship and overcoming the you know a an evil power and the main character which you know is you know kind of the chosen one in a way and all these stories have different versions of dealing with the chosen one but it'll have that as a central thing and the old school kind of high fantasy elements of traditionally looking like elves you know and these different kind of classes and, not classes but these different cultures coming together and um, that feels like you're in a very classic fantasy story. And it does that, but it also brings these newer elements of storytelling that make it feel so compelling on every single page that it's really at its core, really trying to drive the plot forward at a very quick pace um, and, and make the reader constantly on their toes on what's going to happen next. And, you know, hard to put down and very difficult to put down. I mean, I, I race through this thing. Normally when I go really fast in stories, it's because I'm not really liking them and I want to get through them and I want to move on to the next book. Um, and when, when I love books, I slow down and I want to savor them. And this one felt like I wanted to slow down and savor it, but I also wanted to fly through as fast as possible. So what I ended up doing was just reading a lot more per day than I'm used to reading uh, because I just felt so pulled into this story. Um, the author also does this amazing thing, which is he's not the first author to do it, but to make these novellas in between the major books. And I've seen this work and I've seen it not work. 
And here it works so wonderfully because the novellas that are being told are very critical to the story. They don't, they're certainly not novellas where you can just skip them. And I guess, I mean, you could, and you'd still get a lot of the same part of the stories, but they're doing very important things in each of them. Now, I haven't read the third one. Uh, I will be doing it soon, The Ice, and which is the one that came out later on in 2023. And then I'll be all caught up. Um, but the first one dealt with this um, major moment that defined the series. It's almost like the prequel story. Um, and you get these nuggets throughout on what happened, and then you finally learn what happened. And then as you go along and you start getting references to that, you know what happened and you, f and you understand it a lot more and it just feels so useful. And in the second novella, um, you got the story of the background of a character that's going to be a major part of, of this book um, and right before it. So a, they're perfectly done and in the way that they're – of the story that they're trying to tell and not being crazy critical – but very useful and helpful to being understand and be able to love the story even more. Um, you know, the I, I'm finding that the um, fantasy elements here are being used so well and so much better than than I originally thought they were. I mean, originally, you know, you had this very soft sort of magic system and the promise of um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it because it's pretty central and I think it's on like covers and stuff, uh, but of, of dragons. And now that the, that the dragons are fully in force here and you're understanding them and, and they're a, a central theme to the, all of this story, they're done, they're done perfectly. I mean, they're, they're probably the best dragon writing and, um, you know, dragon friendships and these aspects of dragons that I've ever read and tons of books that I read have dragons. It's just implemented so well and critical to the story. You know, the magic is starting to make a lot more sense and, you know, why certain people have it and why they don't. Uh, finding out the history of this world and, and, and why everybody thinks the way they do. It's all coming together and it's so well plotted out. I mean, very. I'd, I'd love to talk to Ryan Cahill. Uh, I definitely will uh, make an effort to reach out to him to do an interview if he wants to. I'd, I'd love him to have him on at some point after I'm all caught up um, because I have so many questions for him that that I really want to uh, that I really want to know. Maybe he's answered them elsewhere about. You know how he constructed the story, how much time and care he's put into writing this story before he even put pen to paper, um, because it feels like he's doing that Sanderson thing, um, that Robert Jordan thing, where he knows everything that's going to happen and he's connecting the dots. And it probably makes writing it a lot easier. Um, but for the reader, it's making all these major moments feel like it all makes sense and it feels like it all has purpose. And, you know, it's that totally opposite of Stephen King kind of writing that I feel like where the author has so much intent on every page that he's writing and it all just feels like it's clicking in the right way. So, man, I, I feel like I just got done reading a book and I say this a lot, but I, but I constantly mean it when I say it, but I feel like I just read a top 10 favorite book that I've ever read. Um, and it might be closer to one than 10. It's, I'm, I'm trying to think of all these benchmark books that I've read and, you know, the, the only things that are really jumping out to me that I actually enjoyed more than this were some Molasm books and some of the books from the Dandelion Dynasty. And that might be it. You know, that, that might be it. I mean, I have to really stare at a list, but this is just so amazing. And I, I, I'm so thankful to Ryan Cahill for writing this story uh, for us all to be able to enjoy. So, um, Getting towards the end here, the people that I'd recommend this to are people that like epic fantasy, people that like high fantasy, because this is kind of the best of the bunch. You just kind of got to get through that first book, which doesn't do a ton of new things, um, and get on to the really, really, really good stuff, and and I think you're going to enjoy it. And I really do feel – I mean, I, I don't study these things. I don't know trends. I don't understand when publishers do what they do. I don't even know if the story's published. It might be self-published. I don't know because I don't do a lot of research beforehand, but I feel like this thing deserves to be the next really big thing in, in the fantasy genre. I mean, and, and I can only say that about a few different authors. Um, you know, I feel that way about like Christopher Rocchio in, in the science fiction, sci-fi fantasy blend uh, type of books. And, and I feel that way about Ryan Cahill. And, and I don't feel that way about a ton of others. There's a ton of others that I love, um, and I feel like they're a little more niche. This one just feels like it would appeal to so many people. 
I mean, if you even liked Wheel of Time a little bit, how could you not just be in love with this? If you like Lord of the Rings, how could you not just be totally obsessed with, with the Bound and... Not the Bound of the... Yeah, with the Bound of the Broken. I get all these things mixed up. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up there. I couldn't be a bigger fan. I'm going to start you know, shouting from the rooftops on trying to get people to read this thing. And I just absolutely cannot wait to read more of the, more of these stories and to find out where the series is going to end up. So that is it for me. Go check out this book. You deserve it. And as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all my patrons with a special shout out to my ascendant tier and librarian tier patrons, Anna G, CJ, Doust, Darren, Gregory, Jonathan, Nathan T, Nev's book channel, Orthodoxia, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Sydney Baker, Tay C, Tahir, Anna, Andra, Blair, Brock, Evan, Fanixan, Harry B, Joe, Cat Mick, Michael Sugarman, Philippe, Sky, TW57, Wacky, and Zion. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video, and if you want to watch some more content from my channel, click over here and I've got some good videos for you. Thanks so much.